Hey, howdy folks. Welcome to Coffee and Tools, so always. Um, today I wanted to do 3D printing. Uh, Thursday, I'm gonna see about the uh, Camaro restoration project that we're uh, getting slowly involved with, but uh, today is 3D printing day, apparently. Uh, got a new product in over the weekend. Now, this product is fairly new. I don't know how new it is because I only heard about it in the last few weeks, and I thought, man, if you run a 3D printing farm, you might wanna know about this stuff. This stuff here, in fact, this is the first sample run off, and I made these paddles, and we're gonna test the paddles for a lot of different things, but uh, the first thing I gotta tell you about is it is supposed to be able to resist heat better than ABS or ASA. It has some really interesting uh, structure and stronger than like just a regular PLA, stiffer, whatever, and also uh, it resists warpage, which is one of the biggest problems I have with uh, running the print farm is the products. We have to check and you know be really careful about cool down times and everything to make sure everything's good. Now, uh, we're gonna get into all this because uh, this is new and we're gonna be looking at charts and everything else today, I guess, to take a look at this. But I'm also gonna run a couple of quick you know tests on the bench here and just see how all this works out. This is exciting. This is called HT PLA from Polymaker. Yeah, this stuff sounds really good. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description below where you can find it. It comes in different colors. Uh, the uh, one I'm gonna show you is actually, this is red actually, this is the new HT PLA. But uh, it comes in black and brown and purple, white and whatever. It's They have a pile of different colors that you can choose from. My whole excitement was the, is warping. I'm just gonna talk about you know model warping like this in particular. We've had various problems, and one of the problems is even after we cool down, we've got it flat. It's like you can do this test here, and it's like, yep, that's flat, you know, and everything's good. It goes out of here to the customer, to the client, and you don't know what's happening at the postal end of it or the shipping end of it, depending on how it's being shipped and stuff. But a lot of times we end up with uh, heat damage at the other end, and it's warped. And at that point, the product is junk, so it makes us look like you know we shipped bad product or something. And it went out of here perfect, you know, it's even tested before it left the uh, shop here. But unfortunately, what happens out on the road, and I might even be, you know, guilty myself because sometimes uh, I'll pile these up in packaging, leave them in the car. You know, the car in the sun, Texas, gets really hot. It might get, I don't know, 140 degrees or something in that car. Yeah, you know, and it might, I might have destroyed the models before I even sent them off. So you don't really, you can't say 100%, you know, that you know for a fact. Now, what I've been doing is they're kept here in the at the house, air conditioned, what have you. Then I put them in the, the car while it's, it's nice and cool, it's air conditioned, and then the car, we get to the shipping area and send them off. And they're in they're in air conditioned comfort too at the office, but once they go from there to a truck and you know haul down the road and whatever, you don't know what may or may not happen. And so I would really like to get into a PLA or a PETG or something that won't warp with some heat bothering it or something. And that's become quite an issue. We uh, switched some of my product is actually PETG, it's not PLA. Uh, and that was to get away from, again, warping or turning into a pretzel, you know. And I was like, oh man, you know, it, it, it can be, it destroys your business. And we lost somewhere between, say 10, about 10% 10 of the business has gone down the drain because of heat damage that happened in mostly in shipping. Or in some cases, I've had heat damage right here at the shop where it's been a really super hot day in Texas last summer, for example, and we had temperatures that were around 100 degrees and we weren't getting cooled down properly and we'd take it off the bed, we'd set it aside and all of a sudden it'll start doing, you know, look like the two by fours at Home Depot. You know, they just start doing all kinds of weird things. So that's been kind of a problem. And one of the things I do is I started switching different company brand names, see if I could get away from the warp problem because I did find that there are some cheap brands out there that will just warp with a little bit of heat, they won't cool down properly, and you, you end up fighting with them. The other problem I did discover, which we all probably will realize in no time, you want to start out with something dead flat, absolutely straight. And if you look at 3D printers, those uh, beds that are on the 3D printers, 
you do an auto bed leveling because that bed is not going to be perfectly flat in the first place. So to get around that, yeah, was like, oh man, yeah, starting at the source, you know. Uh, to get around that, I took the plates off and I brought them to the bench here and I actually put two by fours and clamps and actually pressured the plates to where they were as straight as I could flat, you know, as I could get them and then reinstalled them on the machines in order to get away from, you know, to reduce the amount. Now you still have, you know, when you do the bed mesh leveling and all that, you still end up with, you know, something that looks kind of crazy. Uh, and it, usually they're humped in the center and kind of low on the outside. So yeah, you know, I, I've sort of determined that there is no such thing as a perfectly flat bed when it comes to 3D printing. That's a shame because that part of this industry kind of, you know, sort of depends on that and it can ruin a lot of things right there before you even make a model. But anyways, I made these two paddles and I'm going to show you the chart. Now the first chart I think I'll show you is probably going to be the, uh, the heat chart and take a look at that and just see how you what you think of that chart uh, you can see the abs and the the p the original the normal pla the pla plus whatever the pet g is not look at the heat that's crazy and uh i want to point something out to you too uh you don't use any special temperature on the nozzle uh this runs through at up to 230 degrees celsius now I use 220 because again, we're high speed printing. Also, let's jump back to high speed. Uh, this is rated at up to 300 millimeters a second speed squared, whatever. So it's like, that's fine. Cause you know, the average print I'm running is around 200 up to maybe 250, maybe. So I'm well, you know, below the 300 threshold or something. And also ran this first test off and running this one here, I ran this off on yeah, the Cobra 2 Plus, the one that we don't like, that we don't get anything good off of. And it came off looking really fantastic. And it was like, that came out of there looking better than what that machine normally does. So I was like, okay, that's a good thing, I guess. And so we have a good paddle here. We have these two paddles. Uh, one of the things I want to do is I'm going to get some weights. And I just want to see if there's any difference in the, how rigid. This is just PLA Plus from uh, Deeply which is a uh, pretty good you know pla and then this is the new stuff from polymaker and i'll tell you right now when you do just if you just pick these paddles up and these are the same thickness same product one is finished ones well they're both not finished technically but uh you can feel how flexible that is and then you go to flex this one and it's like you can feel a difference this one's fighting more so it does seem to like be that this is more rigid which they said it would be so that's cool let's look at the next chart Okay, I'm gonna leave this page on for a second because uh, I want you to take a good look at what, you know, the claims of the advertiser or whatever. This is Polymaker, and they are they have a spot here in Houston where they're making filament in the USA. Cool. Uh, if you look at some of the things they have there about the, you know, st stability with the temperature ranges, it's really, it's exciting for me because I have a 3D printing farm and heat is probably one of the biggest enemies I've got to deal with. So. Uh, now, all of this information sort of did put a scare into me because then I was worried about, you know, how good will it flow, uh, you know, the speed things and all that, and everything worked great. And also, there was another question in my mind because of all the claims that the makers got there, probably maker, uh, was will it come off the build plate easily like PLA? Because otherwise, maybe we're going to, you know, have another problem. It came off the build plate normal fine just like a pla uh, just as easy as the pla bricks from the from the pei sheet so it was no problem there uh the other thing i wanted to do like i said was uh would like to try to do like a rigid test with between these two and just sort of see put a heavy weight out here and just see if you can, we can see any deflection difference between the two or not and uh just doing this I can tell you right now, yeah, this again feels a little bit stiffer. So there isn't a lot of difference from the PLA, but uh, if you've been around 3D printing, you'll know that PLA is one of the most rigid materials. When it's cooled at room temperature or whatever, it is one of the you know better ones that way. It just has some nasty characteristics like warping with a little bit of heat around it, that sort of thing. Uh, this, this here is not too bad. This was actually a good plate. Uh, this is, oh, there it goes. There we go. Now we've got it. 
yeah and of course it's not wrapping at all so this is really good but the problem is if this is subjected to uh, even a little bit of heat it will it'll get all funny and, and warp and everything theoretically this new ht pla it, this could be subject to some heat and apparently it's not going to lose its shape it, nothing it's going to hold just like that and uh, i don't know how they did it yeah what's the secret <laughs> but apparently this is you know it won't lose it and that was to me that's like the one of the biggest problems i've been having with my business since i started years ago was uh heat damage like i said so this this could be it and okay price wise price price wise i paid about the same as i would for a good brand name of uh, like any cubit or something like that a good brand name of, of pla so i really didn't see uh, a price hike or something just because this is you know better bigger better stuff or something like you know more wonderful at pla but uh the next question you may have <clears throat> and again because of the nature of this business uh, you might be concerned about how well does it stick to the build plate and i had no problems at all it laid and stick to the pei sheet just fine and released of course as i said previously no problem with getting it to release from the build plate it seems to act in every which way uh just like pla in fact uh, when I ran this one off, I used the, just the default settings for PLA on the AnyCubic uh, Cobra 2 Plus. Now, we won't be using the Cobra 2 Plus for this material normally. It will be going on the, the uh, Cobra 2 Max. <laughs> we'll be using this. And again, looking at it to see how it works out. Because if we get clients like this to order this stuff, these paddles, and if this stuff goes out of here and it doesn't warp, that is a that kind of offsets whatever extra cost this might be uh i think it was around 24 dollars something like that it really sort of uh when you're in a business situation it's almost like i don't care how much it costs i need it you know i want it you know to check it and see if it's any good and if it is then we're going to order lots more you know i want a truckload in here of that stuff now there's one other thing i guess i better mention it i didn't see any ratings for uv uh, light so in other words if you leave this out in the sun it may break down pretty good i don't know it, it didn't seem to have a rating for that and normally with pla products they shouldn't be out in the sun they just it's just a outside that's just basically no you know but uh, the rest of it, fantastic. Now the clients that we have for this type of like these paddle type things and all that, this stuff here doesn't go out in the sun anyways, generally. It's, it's, it's an inside workshop type environment thing. So, you know, it should be fine. But hey, if you're excited as I'm excited, you may want to get a roll of this and check it out. Uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm impressed so far. And if it doesn't warp in the next few weeks, like we, we don't have any uh, material problems with it, I am going to be really smoking blown away. <laughs> so, hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. I'm out of here. Over and out.